він докидає на нашому заключному ТКТ з учасниками національного конкурсу сьогоднішнього фестивалю. Сьогодні ми розмовляємо з Андрієм Висецьким про його фільм «Земля Івана». І я нагадаю вам, що доступ до фільму відкривається о 8 годині. І ви можете ставити свої питання до Андрія через відеоформу на сторінці фільму на Докуспрес протягом цього фестивалю і або сьогодні на ваш розсуд, або якщо ви хочете поставити їх прямо зараз, я думаю, що зручніше це буде зробити на Фейсбуці, в коментарях під трансляцією. Тож чекаємо на ваші питання і репліки, і whatever, хрюкхрю. І також, як я сказала, восьма година, питання, і про голосування я вам потім теж скажу. Не забувайте ставити зірочки фільмам, які ви дивитеся. Отже, Андрій, вітаю вас з прем'єрою. Доброго дня, дякую. Доброго дня, шановні глядачі. Так, вітаю вас з прем'єрою. І з тим, що фільм відібрали на Великий канадський фестиваль Hot Dogs. Може, я не знаю, це насправді дуже класна штука, чи це буде офлайн, чи це буде онлайн, який там буде формат, і як взагалі вам з тим, що ви відпускаєте свій режисерський дебют, який так довго робився у велике море фестивали? Ну, цьогорічно, наскільки я знаю, це буде все онлайн, ситуація така в світі цікава в нас, а відпускаю, ну, рано чи пізно це мало остатися. Як взагалі у вас учасна кар'єра в якості оператора? Ви були, це я скажу, не вам переказую вашу біографію, а глядачам, які, можливо, цього не знають, що Андрій був оператором на цілої купі українських фільмів, серіалів, документальних фільмів, ігрових фільмів. І це насправді, і наразі це є ваш режисерський дебют. І розкажіть, будь ласка, що вас, власне, спонукало сісти в режисерське крісло? Ну, певною мірою це навіть сталося якось випадково, бо почав накопичуватися матеріал, який насправді, ну, ми не мали якогось конкретного плану створити фільм. Просто цікавий матеріал, який мені подобався, який, це, як, знаєте, як було таке певне проводження часу, дуже цікаве і яскраве. Потроху-потроху він почав збиратися, і мої колеги почали казати, що просто жалко, якщо цей матеріал нікуди не піде, навіть в стіл. Ну, таким чином. Це переросло у кіно. Тобто ви просто їздили знімати вашого героя просто не в стіл, а просто заради якогось свого, не знаю, тому що у вас було натхнення. Ну так, бо дійсно вражаючі фактури, дійсно людина, яка на мене справила неабиякі враження. Хотілося поспілкуватися, дізнатися про неї більше від початку, а потім вже це почало переростати в фільм. А як ви взагалі з ним познайомилися? Познайомилися ми випадково під час вибору натури по іншому фільму. Я побачив дуже дивний такий будиночок, все виглядало нібито це 19 століття. А ще на тлі цієї садиби злітали літаки, бо поруч знаходиться Бориспіль. І це було таке сюрреалістичне поєднання, і захотілося так трошки це все роздивитися таким чином. Ви сказали, що Іван справив на вас найбільше враження. Чи можете ви якось артикулювати це? Тобто, окрім цього контрасту і фактури, і чого іншого, тобто, що саме вас привабило в цьому герої? Ну, як я казав, почалося все з фактури, а потім вражаючі фактури. Дійсно, побут на рівні 19 століття, уявити зараз, людина безводогідна, майже не користуючись електрикою, що спонукає людину жити саме в такий спосіб. А пізніше я почав розуміти, що він винятково щаслива людина. В принципі, ми всі думаємо, як нам досягти такого певного стану, щоб почуватися гарно, добре. Але в нього це було так буквально і так просто, що я почав просто для себе шукати відповіді, а як цього дзену можна так досягти. Ну, і така от була вражаюча для мене подорож. У дзен Івана Приходькова. Ви думаєте, що це оточення йому, тобто оточення спонукає його до цього дзену? Чи все ж таки він це оточення під себе оформлює? Ви знаєте, я думаю, що це він, що це його ставлення 
Бо навіть, е, навіть якісь дуже прості речі, навіть коли ми знімали якісь епізоди в полі поруч з його будинком, по, по, отак, якщо дивитися таким кіношним, да, справжнім оком, не дуже цікаво, але коли він там з'являвся на цьому полі, воно якось все переображалося, якась магія з'являлася, якось він так втерпляв те сонце, робив такі якісь речі, Ну, тобто, воно магічно змінювалося, це, це середовище навколо нього. Угу. Тобто, ем, як, як, тоді в таку, як тоді в таку ідеалічну картинку, да, в таке, таке життя, яке є таке ухамітнене, архетичне, мистецьке, в якому сенсі теж, і ми про це теж поговоримо, як взагалі е, стало, як, як він сприйняв присутність камери постійно? Ну, чи не постійно, а часто присутність камери, бо ви самі сказали, що там немає жодної електрики, і ви там, я думаю, були, е, виглядали як прибутці. Як він пустив вас до себе? Е... Ні, електрика там в нього є. Умовно кажучи, ви знаєте, ця проблема мене, ну, вона завжди мене цікавила, і вона завжди є е, таким краєугольним камнем да, в документальному кіно. Це оцей бар'єр між е, оточуючими, ну, командою, яка знімає фільм, і героєм. І тут вона, вона розчинилася дуже, дуже якось швидко. Тобто, е, ну, майже з перших кадрів от, він якось навчився, ну, може це просто для нього такі природні стани, знаєте, бо там в нього в будиночку, да, там і собаки живуть, і кози, і, і, і ці птахи, значить. І що вообще знімальна команда І, і він, якось, він, з ними, він з ними так само спілкувався, як часом ну, звертався до нас. І, і тобто, це, по певною мірою, може, якась умовність, але воно було з його сторони щиро, не було награ, що не було якогось бажання показати себе з іншої якоїсь сторони. Тому. Тому воно так якось дуже природне і пішло. Ми говорили позавчора з Ганною Ярошевич про її фільм про Мішеля, який розводить буйволів в, на Закарпатті. І вона розповідала цікаві моменти про те, як цей Мішель намагався вплинути на картинку, вплинути на образ себе, якби і трошки відсенсурувати фільм mm-hmm. да, під, під себе. Ну, я думаю, я знаю відповідь на це питання, да, але а, чи... Чи якось Іван вплинув на цей образ фільму, і вхор... ну, я ж навряд чи він цензурував щось, і хотів виглядати краще, красивіше, якось інше. Але насправді, як його мистецтво, як його життя вплинуло в результаті на, на результат? Ну, вплив, безперечно, величезний, бо я ж кажу, що почалося все з фактури, почалося, ну, певною мірою екзотика, бо... Насправді, якщо казати взагалі про художників на Євістю, да, це досить, ну, навіть і зараз розповсюджене, да, більш-менш явище, але це певною мірою професійні художники, або з напівпрофесійної освіти, які, які ось чином прийшли до такої стилістики. А у пан Іван, в нього це, знаєте, це більш органічно, бо його тітка Ганна Каленченко, інші його родичі, Кілька поколінь та, займалося цим малюванням, і він пригадує, що ті часи, добре пам'ятає ті часи, коли, на, коли хати по українських селах, як зараз, знаєте, прикрашають календарики, ну там колись там було Стимашенко, чи там якісь інші речі, да, якісь там лебіді, да, які купують, купують на ринках. Що, що був такий певний період часу, що е, такі самі народні майстри, вони заповнювали цю як це сказати, цю, цю нішу, да? тобто це йде, ну, це дуже органічно для нього е, е, сам стан, да? що він пише ці, ці роботи. Да? З цього все починалося, що це в нього не від бажання е, 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 кар'єру, створити кар, кар, кар'єру, да? це, угу. це для нього досить органічно його, його стан. Так? І пізніше це поступово, поступово, поступово стало трансформуватися в те, що е, це його Ну, питання його гармонійного стану, да, як він формується. Тобто е, його, е, його ставлення до життя, да, воно відповідним чином є таким, бо він потребує максимально можливого мінімуму від соціуму. Да, тобто харчується він майже там з землі, да, 
як він каже, за гасом платити не треба, да, це купа вже проблем з плеч. І плюс до того, о, саме, а от бути ще до того ж гармонійним внутри себе, йому допомагає от це, о, робота з фарбами, да, оце, о, ця, ця частина занурення. Да. І, тобто все це разом, да, якщо починалося просто з фактури, з якогось бажання поспілкуватися, може зафіксувати ту унікальну фактуру, яка відходить, да, тобто ці традиції, які, ну, вони безумовно відійдуть, бо е, потреби купувати ці роботи да, у, на, на базарчиках у селян немає. Да, е, тобто від, від такої стадії воно дійшло до, до моменту того, що до, це, саме це було намагання дослідити як досягнути того гармонійного стану життя, того способу гармонійного життя, яким, які, якого дотримується пан Іван? Ви для себе відповіли на це питання? Ну, тут дуже багато прошарків цього, цього, цього відповіді на це питання, але я ж вам кажу, що найцікавіше дуже часто, як ми верталися зі зйомок, Oh, there are lots of layers of the answer for this question. But I would say that the most interesting thing, when we came back from the shooting and someone was just scratching his or her head and said, yes, I'd like to do the same. Why do I need that much of a mess? There's many problems. Did you have this feeling that you would like to begin downshifting and deal with something else, with painting? with artistry well unfortunately my talent of a painter does not allow me to delve deep into this sphere well undoubtedly undoubtedly it emerged this wish emerged but unfortunately we really lost a lot and my generation It's not that easy for my generation to delve deep into this way of life. It needs some efforts. And this is a dilemma which is in front of all of us. Maybe not that often, but still from time to time I ask myself what can really happen to transform my life in this way. Because We were impressed by the energy of Ivan, his rather elderly person, but his physical burden which he overcomes, how he physically working in this elder age is really impressive. Yes, how he is taking the branches uh, for the firewood. Yes, yes, we saw it. This is a very hard work. So I thought that maybe to a certain extent this kind of a final film, the fifth film of the five in the competition, so three of those five films is about the come back to some natural state, about escape from civilization, about, well, I thought that, in fact, this is a very trendy thing, environmental trends, like stop, uh, stop uh, polluting the planet, let us come back to nature. So I think that really this will be the fashion in the world for this way of life, how we one is practicing. But I thought that this is a huge contrast with what is done at the basis of cultural policy. Well, I do apologize because this is a painful moment for me. So it is also suggested to be touristic, attractive, commercial, glamour. And in comparison, I thought that it would be a pity if all of this environment will have some KPIs, some glamour, some glance magazines and this kind of story. So this is the point how the Ukrainian society is still striving to have beautiful pictures. But the artists and the film directors are going ahead. So this is the tendency of come back to some ecological, environmentally friendly story. Well, yes, it was totally right that let us not just pollute the environment, let us not pollute ourselves. We shouldn't take anything extra which we don't 
don't need. This is what's important. This kind of spiritual or moral cleansing. Yes, sometimes it's very highbrow, but in fact those are very simple and very precise actions and thoughts. True, when I was watching this film, I had an idea how we can describe the way of life. Is it the harmony with himself or maybe the comeback to the roots? Maybe, yes, it, it, it also so highbrow because it is compromised by some motivational highbrow literature. But in fact, it is like this because he's an artist for himself. He does not need some of the additional tricks. He doesn't need. Well, I didn't know about acknowledgement because it's a kind of a, a, the notion beyond his world. And what's the most touching, one of the most touching topics of the film is that, for me at least, the life of the artist and that this can be a discussion what is art, what is not art. And whether he is becoming the artist that uh, Mr. Krivolap is coming to him and initiates him and makes him a real artist, or that he takes part in the exhibition at Art Arsenal, whether he will be exhibited in Carter Taylor's gallery. But in fact, he is the artist already. And it seems to me this is how we can discuss what art is, that this is a kind of a spiritual practice. Yes, it is really a spiritual practice. You're totally right. How do you... Well, which, uh, and the way of this practice is even more important than the outcome. Oh, that is a very provocative story, because everybody wants to achieve outcomes, everybody wants to have a first night, some stable and sustainable frames, and then to move on. So what's your attitude towards this counterpoint between the horizontal being of an artist who does not create career and the career path. Have you created it? If you speak about if we speak about your uh, work, have you created career being a DOP and working in the cinema industry? Well, I am still a DOP. Well, yes, but I mean, was it a gradual movement for you to understand that I need to do this and that, and then I need to achieve this and that? Or do you have more of a horizontal story like Ivan has? You do what you like and that's it. Well, maybe option number two, because in fact I'm from the cinematographic family, so this environment since my early childhood was very close to me. The shooting crew and the whole set was very close to me. I was present there since my childhood and the majority of my actions, the majority of my films were very intuitive. I was never trying to analyze them and to divide them into elements. So how can I tell? It seems to me that creativity in any case, is really your way. But of course you achieve something. When I say achieve, I don't mean anything precise to win at the festival or any other work which you've accomplished before. But in some peculiarities, specific things of what you work with, what composition is, what the lighting in the frame is, what the movement in the frame is, this is the way which you gradually moving along. You find something or you lose something. How did you choose, during your career path, how did you choose the films to work with, the projects? Because we're speaking about the creative approach. You working maybe at some totally different projects, maybe they're not different that much, but you were working at the TV projects and smaller documentaries. So how did you work with them? What were the differences between them? Or do you find something in common between them and you can implement 
implement yourselves in both, and what's this commonality? I'm trying to simplify it. How can you work both at the TV and not lose yourself? Well, I've never been working at the TV. But it was always interesting for me, maybe it is an issue, by the way, that a rather technical profession of mine, like DOP, and I came to it from a different side, the artistic side. It was interesting to me how to invent, how to solve some story, how to narrate it to be interesting. That is why for lots of the projects, even if there were some script, I had a different attitude. I treated it as a challenge. How can I train my muscles? How can I invent this simple scheme? And how can I look at it from the different perspective for it to be interesting and open and for it to work in the context of the story which we'd like to tell about? Did you have any advice or recommendations with the people with whom you used to work before, with the film directors, when you became the film director? What's the difference? Because you used to be both the DOP and the film director in this case. Did you have to switch between those two professions? Is this the story of principle where you need to take from a different perspective that now I'm a DOP, I'm not the film director? Well, again, I'm using the simpler notions, but still. What's the difference in between those two modes of, of existence, two professions within one person? It was easier for me, because it was not that conscious as the film itself, where I would work as the film director. Undoubtedly, the difference exists, of course. In both professions there are lots of details which really impact how the story will be constructed. Here, for me, it was a kind of a carte blanche, because I'm really interested in the art and history of art, and I was really delving deep into this material and the character who did not need any moral over efforts, because very often the work of the film director is to convince the character and to polish him or vice versa, to make him more popular under the conditions of the footage of the material, to take something of the character. Well, it's not the best word, but still. So from this side, I was totally delving deep into this footage and material. That's a wonderful character, and it was interesting for me. Of course, there were certain complications, but it was interesting to work with him. And the whole crew, I had a fantastic crew of the people Mega experts, super cool cinematographers. So cinema is always a teamwork. To the synergy of all those components. And when we work, we never separate. You're the film director and you're different. Everybody has his or her own feelings. You can see from the perspective of your own profession, of your own peculiarity, or sometimes just as a viewer. So, of course, we discussed all of that, we shared those thoughts and opinions, and this was the way how we created this film. Okay, we've got a couple of questions from the viewers. Thank you for a wonderful film. I would like to clarify about Anatoly Krivolap. Did you shoot the episode for all the, with this artist to show the practical aspects of the artist's profession, or should we find uh, uh, some of the associations with the topics of the horizon? Well, you said that you are the expert in the art history. History. Well, that's interesting. Who knows the... Well, that's Olena Korkudim's opinion. I think that Olena is a journalist, so maybe she saw this film before. Well, as for Mr. Krivolop, it was the fantastic case, and incidentally, because Mr. Ivan really likes artistry of Mr. Krivolop, Anatoly Krivolop. And some day in the... Uh, 
conversation he wanted to say such a cool guy i would like to get acquainted with him so we spoke about that for several times we never invented it as an episode like ivan wanted to get acquainted with anatoly krivolap and that's it so we were searching for such an opportunity and that was really cool when Anatoly Krivolap agreed to come to Ivan's house but there already there was such an interesting and fantastic atmosphere created since from the first words very cautiously but as an avalanche they began to communicate they found common grounds and so on that really turned out to be a very powerful episode in the film. Well, unfortunately, we did not come to this situation rather in a deep way, but this happy incident helped us to tell this story from this perspective. But it means, and this is the clarification about the biography of the character, that he follows the process, he goes to the exhibitions, how does he do that? He is not living in the Hermetic. Sorry, he has Matisse catalog. He is not living in the middle of the field, knowing nothing and seeing nothing. He is still embedded into this context. He is going to the exhibitions. How could he know about Krivolap? Well, he said those horses are so beautiful there. And that's it, right? Powerful, beautiful horses and the color, he said, real, authentic color was going through. And this is an interesting plot line. During our shooting, Ivan is trying to get away from the traditional technique and working with acrylic paints. And he's saying, how can he do that? I need to communicate with Krivolap. So, he says, if you need to put five layers of paints, you should use all the five layers. That's the wonderful approach. Well, Ivan is not in the vacuum. He's not totally cut from the issues and problems of our world, vice versa, he is totally deep in the problematics. First of all, the problematics of his native village, because all of those global corrupt, corruption problems and all the rest, which totally demolish our country, they can be found in his village as well, and his way of life. He does not take it from this world, but he is ready to give it back to the world and to help its improvement. He is not cutting those ties and bonds, he is supporting them, and he is trying to positively impact his surrounding. So we can imagine and we can see how it adds him some internal work, because it's not that easy to abstract yourselves after you connect to some informational flow just to get out of it and to do what he does, because in fact it's a huge internal work. Well, you see, this situation, this flow does not devour him, vice versa, he is coming with this energy, with this flow, and he's trying to get rid of something totally extra and he is directing what he needs into the proper direction. And the next question, an interesting one, about the comfort of life. When we watch this film, and a very attentive viewer is asking, during I, when I watched this film, it was interesting about this way of life. Cesaria Evera, at the peak of her career, she went barefoot on the stage, because she felt nice. But what about the protected and comfort of the novel? Artist. Does he need that comfort in the better conditions or an apartment? Maybe it is so important for him because how the artist have uh, what's the artist attitude of the artist when he needs, for instance, medical or any other help? Well, you know, as for the medical help, it's rather funny because someone even coughed there before COVID, of course, and he said, why are you so weak? Just get out in the morning and I just take this honeydew and I wash myself. So it's very simple. He has a very simple attitude towards the medical help which you mentioned. All of that was not only just from his fantasy, it was done by many generations of the villagers and they were happy. They never needed anything else. And what was the first part? 
part of the question uh, whether they need whether he needs comfortable life at all well of course I think there is an optics, the perspective when you look at a character and when you would like to improve his conditions of life. Not everybody would like to live in this hut of clay with the raw straw on it. Would it be that this comfortable life will interfere? Yes, it will bother him. He was telling that. He said that gas will not be helping. And uh, it is mentioned in the film, this is what distracts us from something real, something important. Because the lifetime is so short and we're losing lots of energy for some issues. And we have nothing left for the most important things. That's what you were speaking about, the uh, clay floor or raw straw. And he said, what should I clean? I just take away the dry straw and when I move some grass, I feel such a wonderful aroma in my heart. And then again I give, take it back and give it to the goats. So this is the full recycling circle. And one more question from the same viewer. Thank you, Elena, so much. What is your relationship with the poetic movie? Because I remembered the uh, Earth by Alexander Dovzhenko and the apples from this movie. Yes, we have all of that in our subconscious. Of course, we all of us have that in our subconscious, in a good sense or in a bad sense. Well, we have it in a good sense, but how it is done by us in our films, it can be different. Well, you know, it seems to me that still, still, uh, the material is always dictating this, the solution. And the solutions which can be found in this film, maybe any other different solutions wouldn't suit this film, but they are all organic here, they are working and they were created with these basics. Because it seems to me that even Shevchenko and Dovzhenko, sorry, Dovzhenko's apples in the film uh, were emerging when he saw this story in the life, this older man and the rain. These are the things which are so valuable in the documentaries, because the most expressive things are not that easy to invent. You can see them, you can fix them and document them and maybe use them in the feature film then. But just sitting like this in some office, they won't just emerge just like that. So this is the kind of a circle, because it came as a circle in the end. I think that Olena's question is also was asked because this discussion Maybe it's not that relevant, but still, we had some discussion that Ukrainian cinema has to go away from the canon of the poetic cinema. And they need to search for other expressive ways, a different cinema language. What do you think about that? About the rethinking of the poetic cinema, which already took place for sure? Are we at the stage, maybe not today, but yesterday or the day before yesterday, when we were stuck with these aesthetics of poetic cinema? What do you think about that? Well, I think that during the last years, Ukrainian cinematography still had this platform for the development. And I wouldn't say that the ideas of poetic cinema are dominating somehow in this work. Cinema, first of all, needs to be different, diverse. And this is its biggest advantage, that it is created by different people, that it is diverse. And again, answering the question, when when the cinema becomes a nice one, then all the elements, the script and the film direction and the music are all combined into one puzzle. And we can see those different gaps. And then we have an interesting film in the end of the day. 
That is why this organics of combination is the main thing. So it's, it happens very often when it's taken out of the context, when we have some of the poetic frames in the history, which has a totally different character of the narrative, it's not that nice. But again, it creates and communicates with this language. Vice versa, some of the daily frames would be also not that nice. So this should be a balance and it is so important. We are going on with the conversation with the Ukrainian cinema and not only. How? What was the optics which impacted you most of all? As you're in DOP, so maybe for those, those DOPs who will be listening to this interview, which cinema impacted you visually and which DOPs impacted your work and why? Oh, it's a huge list, in fact. Talented and cool films, well, they are so numerous. And again, well, you know, the person is always searching for something which corresponds to his or her state at the moment. So this story can be divided into certain stages, and at each of the stages we can find your own correspondent points. But what you come to with some experience that the most hardest and the hardest and the most complicated solutions are the simplest ones. If I was a big fan of Greenway, then now, Peter Greenway, then now, knowing my profession a bit, I can see the elements out of which this wonderful, fantastic film is done with, but I understand them. But <coughs> there are some points, some things, like different thing, films, where it's not that easy to describe all of that, where all of that seems to be simpler, but behind this simplicity we can have a huge taste and experience and feeling of the nature of cinematography. So this is how I try to attract. Could you name some of the recent examples? It would be so wonderful. Examples? Well, I'm not, it's not that easy for me to remember. I'm afraid that I will remember something wrong. Well, look, this range begins with Peter Greenway, and again, as I told, oh, I totally lost it. Satan Tango. Bellatar. Yes, Bellatar. The range from Peter Greenway to Bellatar. So you can understand how different they are, aesthetics and style, and understanding of the nature of the frame, time in the frame. But all of those works inspire in their own way. And every time you try to search for something which is correspondent to your personal, things which really are inside you. So rephrasing you, when you are developing in your profession, you are switching between the modes. I'd like to shoot like this one. Oh no, this was wrong, I'll shoot differently. But then, with your experience, you understand gradually that any solutions will be totally fair if they are organic. You are becoming more open for different options. I may say in a simpler way, there is a solution which you may like or you dislike. It's all so subjective. But vice versa, there are the points which are not solved, they are accidental and not interesting. Is this the sign of a bad cinema, S just random solution? Yes, it is a bad one. But do all of the solutions have some explanation? We do that because… Well, that's what I wanted to add. 
I don't know how to formulate that. Some of the things, some of the points, for instance, you invented an episode together with a film director, if we speak about the feature film, and you begin to create it, and it's not working. But at the set we have some element which totally changes the way and it begins to work. The same happens in the documentary. Rather often, after inventing something, how you would like it to, sh to be shot, some moments you have your internal resistance if the process is going in a different way. It's a very important moment that you need to leave it for free, this feeling that it's going wrong, but to search, maybe it's going right, but your attitude towards the material is not that right. Maybe you don't understand something. You misunderstand it, so this case will lead you to the direction where you have a more interesting solution, because just accident is playing a very important role in the cinema. I wouldn't say that it's just the, just the accidental lack of the solution. Were there are moments when you shot this film when you just understood just what were you, you were saying, that there are some of the situations what you understood that this is the moment, this is the case, which brought me to the different direction, but it was right. Well, almost everything was working like this. Almost all of the components, as an example, with Anatoly Krivolap, episode, they all were going out of the character, from the nature, the state of the nature, there are even some of the episodes, even some of the mode frames. We did not plan them. It was just how it was working during the day. That was an interesting. We have an episode at the marketplace there, which we had to shoot. That is a huge market. I don't remember where it is. Is it Makariv district or not? It's not important. But we went. We had to go there because he wanted to sell something and to buy something. And as the village markets were going, we had to go there at 5 a.m. or even beforehand. We left Kiev. The car was broken. We were stuck for two hours until the vehicle was repaired. When Ivan came, he said, "Why can we?" Why should we go there? It's too late. But we still went there. But it was so successful, though it was the whole hotspot of this market, and there was a whole crowd of people there. And on the one hand, we were very close to our character, but in this crowd we were totally lost. And in my opinion, it was a very interesting episode in the end of the direct communication with the people who came up to him, with his neighbors, who are in this chaos. And we understood that we came and shot much better. Well, of course, if we came at 5 a.m., we would be seen, and they would notice us, no one would come up to him, and he would be on his own, standing at the sideline, and everybody would be waiting for him. But you see, this was the accident which helped. I would like to ask you, as far as I understand, one of the last frames, maybe chronologically it's done in a different way, but the last episode, when he is coming to the art exhibition in Arsenal, it took place in 2017, right? And the film had to be shown, I saw the piece of news, it should be shown in 2020, and it was ready in 2019 when you gave it to the state film agency. So, how long was the way since the beginning of the work, up till today's first night? How many years passed? And why it happened? Why? What was the year when you stopped shooting, finalized the shooting process? And why so much time passed until the first night? Well, 2017 
is my notes, just as so-called notes only. But later, you know, Ivan's life is connected with the nature cycles. So it was so important for us that we had some footage shot beforehand, but to take and to shoot the whole year. Because all of the elements, how the nature is changing, they don't, uh, they really impact his life. So to follow all of these changes, it was so important to do it, it seems to me. So a whole year was taking the shooting only. But then we made a pause after we gave the film to the state film agency to rethink something, to change something and to add something, but in fact we just made it shorter. What did you take away? Several episodes, we just took away some of the episodes, because, well, in fact, a huge layer was not included, and it's a pity. This was the plot line where Ivan, with a simple drawing way, without taking away the pencil from the paper, creates some drawings and tells about his life, some interesting remembrances of his about pre-war and after-war times. But this footage was according to its character, according to its nature, it was different. We did not include it. And several more episodes which we included, but they bore that they interfered, because altogether there should be some organic narration, and they were a bit of... Um, like the branches from the tree, to the sides. So this wholesome approach was totally broken. So the exhibition at the Arsenal was shot before all the majority of the episodes in the film, yes. But you put it almost in the end of the film. I will tell you more. During the shooting, when uh, he, uh, Ivan's work was also bought for some advertisement, it was always also the outburst, because I was traveling throughout Ukraine and I could see his works in each window. So this structure of seasonality was shot after a huge exhibition and after the bank acquiring his works. And there was one more episode because it was so interesting for us. How? Because we took some of this footage out of the film, what can be more literal if in each city, in each branch of a bank you can see a picture? So it was interesting for us to see what will be the change within Ivan because of those circumstances. But it was weird because we mixed it with the episodes shot before that and after that, and as I feel, there were no changes in Ivan. So could you find the difference, right? We didn't. So in my opinion, it is a whole logic that there is an artist and then we need to create the work for the viewer, that he is famous, he has the page in Wikipedia, he is the member of the Union of Four Craft Masters and artists and he has some courses for the children. There is an episode when he is coming to the school children and really, really is working nice with the children. He teaches them how to draw. So he's in the context. He's not isolated. He's not some grandfather who is painting pictures and then he's taken to the exhibition. But still. The logic of the film is not affected by that, but there is a counterpoint. All of that is beginning with the, the really beautiful 
music and its ending with the structured narrative because we understand he is taking away the winter he is just making it go away and wants summer to come so there is the difference between his simple life which he has in his super creativity and then in some attempts to institutionalize that for me Krivolop's arrival is the initiation into real artists and we can see a bit of an ironic approach because we can see Ivan there who is barefoot who is he has his own artist's uh, practice, he's living his life. And then Krivolap, who is a wonderful artist, and he is going and is just uh, take, taking this huge car, which seems to be from a different planet. And when he's coming to the gallery, when he's coming to Arsenal, it seems that he doesn't need all of that. And you think, why is all of that? He doesn't need it. So I have this impression of the huge counterpoint between the artist and the need to be embedded into this context. And the importance of this comfortable life which Olena was asking about, maybe he doesn't need it. Was it one of the topics which you wanted to articulate? Because to a certain extent you created this logic. Well, do you mean that whether he needs some acknowledgement? Is it one of the topics, or I just invented it in my mind? Well, you know, it seems to me that it is a very important topic, that this is the conflict. Yes, it is the conflict, but in fact, you know, if we... Well, what's his attitude towards? Well, the rain, then it is the rain. If there is an exhibition, there will be an exhibition. If the bank acquires his works, well, let it be. Rather often, or maybe I personally, it is inherent to us to pay more significance to the things than they are worth it. It's a very interesting story about this meeting with Krivolop. Because after a glass of vodka, Anatoly begins to tell that this breakthrough in art took place when he to, uh, left his cellar, because the cellar seems to be a classical way for the artist, but psychologically it was working in a different way. Well, yes, well, for the sake of this story, dramaturgically, within this film, this is why he is coming there. We understand why it's needed there, but still, he is asking with the irony, what about your picture? Was it sold? Yes, it was sold, for a huge sum of money. So he seems to be ashamed, he seems to be ashamed to tell about that, because Grivelup has an ironic attitude towards that. Because he is famous not by his colors and by his practice, but because his work was sold for several thousand dollars. Well, in any case, he's a wonderful artist, and you can see that this obstacle which existed before, because he didn't understand what was the context which they wanted to use him in, this irony, which was very easily dissolved, because he had the same ironic attitude towards Ivan. Well, some older grandfather is painting, let him paint. But still, during this short period of time, they finally found the common grounds and they, each of them, left something. And even Krivolop took his horse. He wanted to repaint him a bit. Krivolop seems to be living in the village as well, some far from the city. He is not in the center of the art crowd of Ukraine. He is living separately as well. So maybe this was when they found common grounds. Would you please tell about the rituals? Well, they structure the film a bit, of course, but still... Well, maybe again, I lack some knowledge. When you look at that and then you understand that it is done in Kyiv region, 
They are, maybe they are transforming, transformed a bit because they look like images from Malanka. The Christmas rituals, are they authentic or did he create them on his own? Well, they are authentic in his understanding. Well, of course, this is the mixture of different points, but for himself he feels that this is how it should be. And annually he is conducting those rituals. Some of them are done permanently and constantly. Some of the things were a bit more complicated and done for the film. Because when we understood that really this ritual plotline has to be there, because it explains the nature of his attitude towards sun, why he draws the sun so much, we have this kind of connection. Then we decided to go on with this topic and to support it with the current structure. But again, it was based upon his feelings. He is living and working with the domains. For him it is so natural to come to them and to communicate with them. Maybe those elements, these forces of nature feed him with energy to creativity, to life. Okay. And the final question, maybe it's trivial but still interesting. Do you plan to go on to be a film director of the documentaries? What do you go on in your, with your film director's story? Have you found anything new, some project for yourself? There is an interesting topic which we plan to work on, it's not that easy for me to tell you about it. Well, but it's not the, the debut to go on with the career. It's not, this film was not just an accidental thing. I don't know, maybe this will be just a debut and that's it. Maybe it's just an accident. Okay, we'll definitely would like to keep it this way. Thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you all of the viewers who stayed with us and Olena who sent so wonderful questions. I'm reminding you that in five minutes there will be free uh, the access opened for, to the film Ivan's Land and you can vote for it assessing it and do not forget that it should be done during the four hours after you push the button play this is the peculiarity which is the part of our viewers experience and the winners well we'll get to know who is the winner on Friday and we'll be waiting for that. Let's watch all of the films of the national competition. If you still haven't done that, try to catch it up and have a nice evening.